Welcome, welcome, welcome to episode number 17. Sweet 17. It doesn't have the same tone. I wish I would have used sweet, sweet, sweet 16 with Maven last week. TP, thank you for stopping by, man. Nothing sweet about Clint, though. No, nothing. <laughs> you know, now, now, I see the, now I see a different side of uh, Maven, a, a, a charming side. I mean, you obviously spend more time with him playing every morning, so yeah. you know him better. So. Right. Uh, anyway, this week... The most followed, most popular, most subscribed to blackout player in the world, Tyler TP. Did you ever think that that would be a thing? It still sounds a little weird. It's yeah. All this newfound success on Twitch that I'm having is, is awesome, but it's still very fresh. What do you think you attribute it to? I mean, looking at it through the fresh pair of eyes that you're looking at it right now, and you've seen it, obviously you saw Jack... Uh, you know, blow up this this past year. Right. I, you know, we won't even talk about Ninja because that's an obvious one. But yeah. you know, from from your group of of uh, Call of Duty casters and coaches and all that, how how do you, how you, how are you experiencing this like explosion of popularity? Honestly, I just have a stupid grin on my face when I'm looking at my analytics and stuff because I've been doing this stuff for a long time. I streamed. It's some it's something I've always focused on a lot. Being a streamer, yeah. a consistent streamer, even back when I was a pro in Call of Duty, stuff like that. And I sort of hovered with okay numbers, nothing special. And then all of a sudden, Blackout has been a, a game changer for me, which is the super cool. The Outlaw did it? The Outlaw did it. <laughs> it really the Outlaw did. 3X? It really did. I think the biggest thing, though, is I played in the Doritos Bowl early on with, with Courage. Mm-hmm. And I got a nice little bump in viewership from that, getting yeah. exposure from him because yep. he's been blowing up. Yeah, of course. And then I decided to switch over to back to console. And I think that was the biggest thing, biggest decision that I made that sort of jump-started this growth on Twitch for me. Yeah. Because there really isn't anyone in that lane. And then some of the bigger streamers, like your Shrouds, your Dr. Disrespect, stopped playing Blackout as much. Mm-hmm. And I was just that guy that was always there every single morning at the same time. The, the consistency and the amount of hours I've been putting in has just uh, really been paying off for me. How many hours in the uh, last month, let's say? Last month, about 248 hours. 248. What is that? What Divide that by four for me. It's like over 10 days. Jeez. No, that's by four. Oh, by four. Yeah, 248 by four. Sorry. So let's see. Yeah. 40 a week times four, it's 160 hours, and then you add, so a lot. You know, that's the, the math that comes out of that, the, the total sum. That it's, comes a lot of hours. it's a lot of hours. Um, how, does, uh, how does your wife feel about it? Obviously, she's experiencing this with you. Uh, fortunately, I have the best wife ever. She's yeah. been supporting me since, you know, I yeah. wasn't really making anything at the start of the pro days. So she's used to these crazy hours I've been putting in for yeah. when I was practicing for events, stuff like that. So... We both know that growth like this is, you know, once in a lifetime sort yep. of thing. Oh, yeah. Uh, so she is completely understanding. She works full time as well. And then I also have coaching to do on the side. So yeah. I'll, I'll stream my eight, nine, ten hours per day. Yeah. Go watch two sets of scrims. We'll talk. We'll catch up for maybe 30 minutes, maybe yeah. an hour before we both yeah. go to bed because we're both extremely tired from yeah, working yeah, yeah. all day. So. Uh, I wouldn't be able to do it without her. Uh, all this stuff, to be honest. So yeah. uh, I'm blessed for sure. Be- behind, behind, uh, or no, not, and it's no longer behind us. To, to the side of every successful man, there's a very powerful woman. Yeah. I stopped saying behind every successful man because it sounds a little bit like that. Like when when people said every any single time people would talk about Jude and say, you know, behind every successful man, there's a very powerful woman or strong woman. I'm like, she wasn't behind me. She was like right near along, me. Right yeah, she, was, she was just to my right. Yeah. Uh, and an equal an equal partner. So that's that's super dope. Um, my question was more like, how is she experiencing this? Like, oh, she's like, because she's seen <laughs> you right uh, be a pro player, right? Win a championship, a world championship. She's seen you win countless regular championships, going uh, to coaching, going to caster, and then finally, you know, you start doing what you've been doing all along, but now you're seeing this sort of success that sort of beats everything else that you've done in the past from a, you know, earning standpoint. And right. then, you know, obviously you being young and, you know, in the future, hopefully starting a family, like this, this plays into, into that sort of storyline, right? Like for, for <laughs> you, um, you know, a lot of people that, that are young are always like, well, I want to spend as much time with, with my, you know, with my significant other as much as I can. But, you know, when, how long have you been with your, with your wife? Uh, we'll be together for 10 years in April, married for three, though. Married for three. All right. So that, that's, that I think is, is, the, is the powerful tool that you need in order to have like a, a very same page mentality with, with your significant other that says, right. that says babe. I'm a, you're going to go work and I'm going to go work and we'll may, we'll see each other and we'll try to see each other as much as we can. We're yeah. together. We're working towards a common goal. And then like, obviously this benefits both of you. So that's super, super, super cool, man. Mm-hmm. It's exciting because when we made this move, we moved to Texas to, here to Frisco recently. Yeah. And, you know, we were sort of, you know, we were both working in, in Cali, mm-hmm. obviously. That's where we're both from, San Diego, North County. Uh, and, you know, things were steadily 
growing for us, you know, just trying to save money, saving up to buy a house, the normal grind that usually yeah. are, most people are in in their yeah. 20s. And we decided to make this move. She found it, she got a job offer out here. Obviously, you guys are located out here. So when we made this move, we both sort of were on the same page that this is grind time. Yeah. We're trying to save to buy a house. We have plans to start a family before we're 30. Yeah. So uh, uh, all this stuff has been obviously amazing to yeah. expedite those goals. Do you have a specific year as to when you're going to um, It's sort of a, make, it's, a, it's make like, it a positive? It's like a soft goal of like around 30 if when we yeah. want to have kids and start a family and do all that type of stuff. But, I always said, I always told you, I always told everybody, I'm like, when I'm 29, I'm going to have my, my kid. Yeah. I said, at, at, at that time, I used to say my first kid, uh, because I didn't know how many I wanted to have, and then I had Olivia, and I'm like, you know, once enough. Right. Um, you know, we care about the planet. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. To <laughs> anybody responsible. That, yeah, to anybody that has any, more than one kid, though, I'm just joking. Um, anyway, so uh, welcome to the Eavesdrop Podcast. Uh, our sponsor today is Squarespace, a website in which you can create your own website. Very easy to use, multi-tool. Uh, you can add your store, you can add pictures, and it's all super simple to make. Uh, it's squarespace.com forward slash last pod, last pod uh, for 10% off. You don't have a website right now, so you, this will be perfect for a new I look into uh, internet, uh, internetainerpreneur. That's, uh, like that's the that. new word that we're using. It's T. Martins, but I'm, I'm trying to steal it. Uh, <laughs> Internet entrepreneur like you needs, a, obviously, a website because you sell a lot of merch. Right. Right? And as I said that, I know that I have a box right there with my name on it from your from your shop. Perfect. That has, uh, and I was supposed to wear it today, but I'm, I'm a moron oh, sometimes in the morning. You got to rep the product, uh, man. Yeah, I know. I could have <laughs> been wearing it right now. And I wore, the, like, I already had my, my outfit planned out. Yeah. And then today I saw the, the Embos. This is what I call the, the, the Embos. Embos. Yeah, I mean, okay. that's all he wears. That's my man's. Um, Anyway, so it's squarespace.com forward slash last pod. Again, it is super intuitive to use. You can move around your pictures and create something. And again, if you use uh, code last pod, you get 10% off on your first purchase. Maddie, I need you to start a website for me after this. Just go to squarespace.com forward slash last pod and then use last pod so we can, so we can get the discount as well. Anyway, we've got to get the store launched up. And obviously, you have the, uh, done a really, really good job with your merch. Um, it's difficult for for you know influencers and entertainers that are starting a, a, an apparel company to get really lost in in their brand, not identifying whether or not you know uh, their logo or their name or their brand is a logo or a brand. Two different things because right. you know think about um, you know Apple obviously has the the Apple, but it also says Apple. Um, you, you have Nike and you have the Nike and then you have the Swoosh. It's standalone. It's both branding and, and logo. So right. how did you decide with the... With the I, I like it. It's a TP. It's a TP yeah. with teep underneath. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But which is super dope because it's simple. It's understated. You know, sort of like you. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. a, a, a wholesome, wholesome, calm dude. Voice of a god, <laughs> right? Uh, so yeah, check it out. What's, uh, what's the website to get your stuff? Uh, it's... It's a Streamlabs website, so I do it through Streamlabs, so they, mm -hmm. you know, fulfill all the orders for me. I don't know the link off the top of my head, but it's, it's go on my Twitter bio. It's right yeah, there. Twitter bio or twitch.com forward slash teep. 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 Yeah, love it. Uh, so, obviously, your your name, full name is Tyler, Paul Tyler Paul Show, so you got mm -hmm. your first two, your initials, yep. TP, and made it, made that happen. Yep. Um, all right, so, Tyler, we, we usually like to, to start the podcast by saying, who are you today? Uh, so today I am the coach of the Optic Gaming Call of Duty team. Uh, I've been coaching them for a little over a year now. I came on during World War II, and that was not a fun year. But overall, we turned it around. We're having a good start to Black Ops 4. And on the side, well, I guess it's coming to the forefront now, but I do content, live streaming, YouTube videos, all that fun stuff. So, so if you were to identify yourself right now, I, I like the fact that you said coach first. Uh, and thank you for that. Yeah. Um, you know, for for us, always finding a qualified coach was super important. And then we finally got a chance to work with you. Obviously, you were an Optic Nation for, for a while, and I was right. super happy about that. I like to work with good people, and you've always been somebody that stood out to me as like a, a decent human being above well, anything else. Even when we were competing, and you got, you were you know you were partnering with the with with the with the, uh, with the aches and the and the, the fucking crims of the time. The, the criminals. Like, yeah, the, the bad crim, guys. Yeah, the bad. Not necessarily the bad guys. I sort of. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I, I think I think they 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 play that role well. You know, yeah. spe specifically Aix, and I, I like you know Aix is a, a specific character that I you know he's gonna be on the podcast soon yeah. that that I have so many questions for because it can't be easy 
everybody is the protagonist of their own story. And it isn't until somebody else puts a negative connotation to who you are that you either say, whoa, 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 I'm not, or that you're like, you I kind of am. Yeah. yeah, I kind of am, and, and he does. I think he's one of the ones that owns it. So uh, g- give us a little bit of history. How, when, when did you get started with, uh, with video games? And then we'll work into Call of Duty. So I started with video games when I was very, very young. I have an older brother that's uh, two and a half years older than me, so we would always be playing games against each other and stuff. Man, I, I was a big gamer when I was a kid, starting with Pokemon, switching over to free-to-play shooters. I actually started on PC, funny yeah. enough because uh, I was a console pro for, for a long, long time. But I started with like Mo- Wolfenstein Enemy Territory, uh, Counter-Strike 1.6, a bunch of free-to-play shooters, basically. Yeah. So that's where I sort of got my FPS background and got a lot of reps on shooter games in general on those. But loved MMOs, loved the Final Fantasy RPG games, just uh, so whatever, game I could, yeah, whatever game I could get my hands on, I, would, I was all over it, and I loved it. So. Did you play any sports in high school? Yeah, so I was a soccer player for 12 years, so I played competitive soccer growing up and uh, into high school as well. Didn't know that. Yeah, so super into soccer and, and sports in general. Yeah. Uh, fitness is a, a big part of my life, and I've always tried to keep that at the forefront as much as possible. Same. It's tough to balance sometimes when you're doing you know, content and working full time yeah. and being a pro and all that type of stuff, but uh, definitely into sports and fitness. Who's better, you, Joey, or, uh, or Zuma? Uh, I actually don't know. I haven't really seen them play or anything. Uh, so you. We, we, yeah, yeah. we'll go with me. No, I'm, I'm just joking, but uh, it'd be fun. That's something I've always wanted to do, like get a, get a soccer team together, you know, a little five, five aside side or something yeah. like that. Dude, you can't. So, okay, so Hitch played. Yeah. Right? Um, We're going to make a team, actually. Yeah, Castro is right down mm-hmm. the street, and he's ready. They're talking to him. Yeah, yeah, so he's ready. Um, I'm good. If No, let me rephrase that. I used to be really good. <laughs> okay, I used to be really good. It's just right now my stamina isn't what it Right, we've got to get your cardio. Yeah, cardio, cardio has, been a, has, has been a big, big, big factor. You know what's crazy is that I am a runner stuck inside a, a, a I don't want to say fat, because I'm not fat. <laughs> I, I'm a runner stuck in a, and I'm not lazy either, in an unmotivated fitness person. Right, we'll say that. Right, right, right. I swear to God, every <laughs> single time I see someone running, I hate them. And I hate the world because I'm jealous of the fact that they're doing it. I'm like, man, I wish I could do that. And I've never, for the past 20 years, I've never been able to get into running. Right. So if there's any running coaches out there in, I hate in Frisco. Personally. I, I can't just sit on a treadmill and do it. Yeah, man. well, that's what I'm saying. Like, I see people running outside and I'm like, man, it'd be so awesome to to run f- like all of Frisco or to run through yeah. neighborhoods and, and to experience that. And I, I, I think that I'd be the kind of runner to not wear headphones. I think that I'd want to experience the, the, you know, the audio of nature. Yeah. I mean, yeah. as, as, as far as nature can be with the cars right. and stuff. Um, Anyway, so what was your first iteration to, well, your entry into Call of Duty? What, what Which one? Uh, so I started playing Call of Duty 4, as, yeah. uh, as a lot of people came yeah, in. Yeah, man. Scene. But uh, basically, like I said, I was on PC playing different shooters and stuff like that. Got to high school, and that was the cool thing to do. Pe- a bunch of people were playing Halo yep. and Call of Duty. So I got an Xbox 360. That Christmas was my freshman year of high school, actually. And that's when I, you know, I loved the game right away. So uh, uh, Modern Warfare. Yeah, Modern Warfare, exactly. I hopped in. And for whatever reason, Call of Duty just just felt right to me. Yeah. It's like such a cliche to say, but yeah. I would just play pubs in that game. I could just do it all day long. Loved prestiging. Everyone wanted to get that gold cross. The I paid for mine. Oh, what? Yeah, from this dude named Come on. from this dude named Koopa. I think he used to be a Call of Duty like pro or whatever. Wait, I mean, so you weren't a true gold cross? No, man. Come on, man. The thing is, is like I I am uh, I love Call of Duty, as you know. I, I think. Uh, I like literally love Call of Duty. Yeah. Like it is, it is the thing. Same. And, and, and I don't say, like it changed your life also, yeah. but it, it changed my life too. But I think that even if it didn't, it'd be one of those things that I like basketball. Basketball is like my favorite sport to play out of all the sports. Um, but Call of Duty for some reason like sort of made me feel something. It was a sniper rifle for sure. And I tell this story like nonstop, but in case you haven't heard it, let me fucking tell you. It was, uh, I, was on, I was in a map called St. Mary Glees. I was outside of the church in a building that was broken down, and I was looking down uh, the the main road into back stories, which was broken down building. And I had my my car 98K, okay, strapped, strapped. And then I see this the enemy like moving to the right, and right before he gets out of frame, one pixel away from being unkillable, I kill him. And that shot, man, made me so or I was so hooked on it. And by that time, I, I I'd always 
I'd always had this sort of affinity towards snipers. Watched every single sniper movie, as bad and cheesy as they are. Yeah. Watched um, the, the series Sniper is the name of, the, of, of that series. You, you, you've never seen it, I bet. And then I saw Enemy at the Gates. Amazing. You ever seen Enemy at the Gates? Nope. Tyler. Enemy at the Gates you've never seen? Nope. Okay, listen, after this... you got to teach me up, man. No, listen, after this, go stream, go do your thing. Yeah. But take, a, take time to watch it. It's with, uh, I don't even know. I, I, it's a famous dude. Anyway, <laughs> but bro, it's so good. It is the best sniper movie yeah. out there. Better than better than uh, American Sniper, which was an amazing movie. Yeah. Uh, better than what? I, I mean, there's there's a million sniper movies, but Enemy at the Gates is by far the fa- my favorite sniper movie of all time. I'll keep it in mind. Yeah. No, no don't keep it in mind. Promise me that it. you're I'll gonna watch it. it this week, man. You know. And have you ever seen Deadwood? Nope. One of the best shows on HBO. If you guys haven't seen Deadwood, you go watch that. The movie's about to come out this okay. year. It's so good. This show that I am gonna fly to LA, right, to do the podcast with Hutch, and also to go watch the movie with Hutch, holding hands as we enjoy oh, one of our favorite shows of all time. That's beautiful. Thank can you. Man. Can I get a picture of that? You may. Yes. Yeah, so we're thinking of making posters and T-shirts and stuff I like that. I'd um, definitely buy. So okay, so you started playing Call of Duty. You were really good because you gravitated towards it. it felt right. Yep. Uh, how did you discover competitive Call of Duty? So, actually, a funny story. Just playing playing a pub, overgrown headquarters. Just doing my thing, dropping my hundred plus kills. Just doing whatever what I always do. Yeah. And then some player in the lobby said, "Yo, man, you play you play MLG game battles?" And I was like, I, "No, I had no idea what it was." Yeah. Like a lot of people didn't at the time so you're like you plug in your mic so, you're like wait hold on yeah i was like wait what, no no, wait, what I, you no I don't over I was like, hey hey no man <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah uh so i figured out what mlg was well, so you're like shit yeah how old are you yeah, dude? Right? <laughs> <laughs> super confusing at the time uh so basically i figured out what game battles was figured out what mlg was and i started watching the halo 3 tournaments yeah and i as soon as i saw that i'm like wait hold, hold up i can play this for a chance at money yeah. And that was all I needed. So I started watching, you know, the Halo 3 gods do their thing. Yeah. Snipe down, doing his montages, all that type of yeah, stuff. Yeah. And, and that was the moment for me where I was like, I know what I want to do now. I, I definitely do. So for, from that moment on, uh, that what guy. Gra- what grade were you in? Uh, this was, must have been freshman, end of freshman year, maybe sophomore year of high school. Uh-huh. So I was, I don't know, what, 15, 16 at the time, something like that. Yeah, I was 26. Uh, so... Basically, from that moment on, we started playing GBs. Uh, we were just terrible. I was on some random game battles team. We would we would end the season like fifty. Wait, but how, 50. how did you how did you, how did you find your teammates? Uh, from that pub. So that guy had a, a team on game battles, and okay. he had a couple of friends that he would play with from his I don't know if it was his hometown Do you or whatever. His name? Uh, it was uh, the group that I played with was guy's name was Regulate Lancers and Garrett. Any of them still around? Uh, no. They, I'm still sure talk they, to any of them? Uh, I still talk to them every once in a while. We'll yeah? check in, just see how, see how we're doing. Hell yeah. But uh, that was our first team. It was authentic reality. So we got we started getting our reps in on GB, and that's when I started figuring out who the, who the top players were at the time. So it was like your team fears, envy, all yeah. those guys. And when I would match <laughs> up against them in, in a match or whatever, I'm yeah. like, oh, I got to go dumb hard. I got to yeah, make yeah. sure I get my pictures and all that type of stuff at the time because – you know that that was the the cream of the crop, right? That was the people that you had to yeah, you, see how you, good you were. Real talent. UT was the yeah. was a, before they became Envy. Right, right, right. So uh, I would play, you know, those game battles matches, and that's when then, uh, they started developing into the PCLs and all that type of stuff. Yeah. So I didn't start actually going for those bigger tournaments until Modern Warfare Two came out because I was still busy. Uh, with soccer and all that type of stuff, I had some real life obligations going on, so I couldn't really put in all that time that I wanted to with the with Call of Duty and gaming and everything. And then uh, it was around the time where the PCLs came out for Modern Warfare Two, and the so they had the that was when the split happened, where they had the PCLs on Xbox and PlayStation. Yeah, and it was around the time when me and the now wife were just starting to talk and started dating. Mm. So the, the actual pro circuit and the nationals tournament was on PlayStation. I yeah. was an Xbox guy. Yeah. Who so, was? Everyone so, was. Exactly. So she had a PlayStation. Nice. So, so I was like... She game too? She game too. What did she play? Does she uh, play Call of Duty now? So her favorite series was the Ratchet and Clanks and just different RPG games. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, we played we played Call of Duty and stuff too. Yeah. So I got a little. You should do uh, a little th- there's, there's gaming this, dates. Yeah, there's this couple called uh, Husband and Wife Gaming, mm-hmm. and then there's a uh, Father and Son Gaming. Yeah, I've I, seen that one. I, yeah, I always thought that that was like super, not niche necessarily, or and and it's not like a like a gimmick either. Like they, these these people like really play with each other, and, right? And uh, and and that's it's awesome. I yeah, love to see stuff. I, like I wanted that. to do the Optic Brothers show with me and my brother. Yeah, because he played obviously as, as you know and. 
Um, anyway, I thought, I thought it'd be really cool. You, you should you should think about doing it's, something like that. It's a good like idea. I get a lot of my streamers like, well, you, you and the wife should play duos or whatever. Yeah. And I talk to the wife about it. She's like, oh, I would just be absolute shit. So I don't know yeah. if I want to well, do it. Well, to start it out. And, <laughs> yeah. And, and, and what do you really need, right? Besides you're the, you know, you're going to carry. Yeah. Right? right. If she goes, but she that. wants to be good too. That's yeah. the thing. We yeah. used to play Black Ops Two League play together and stuff well, like that. Go. She had one of the best so MS, she, MSMC shots I've ever seen. I think. Well, there you go. You know, we should have picked. Up. I always said <laughs> that, that the most smart. Look, if if very early on when HL was on the team, and we we had the four. You know, obviously Big Time Merc and and, uh, and Sethi. Yeah. I always said I'm like I'm like guys, you better pray that there's no girl out there that's like incredible or just as good as any of you because. One of you is getting dropped for her, <laughs> and you got, and we're gonna have the most marketable team oh, in the world. I, I always had this like mm -hmm. you know this mar ahead. marketability. Right. Um, yeah, I, I, you know that's I, I keep on pushing Jew to to do this this podcast. It's a it's a dog podcast with Maven's uh, girlfriend Cat. Oh yeah, because she's huge into dogs as well. Uh, like she was a dog walker just because she loves dogs mm -hmm. and Judith loves dogs. That's why she has a zoo at the fucking house. And uh, <laughs> and I keep trying to get her because you know once she gets going, she's really good. She's she's very Easy to like Judith is and and I uh, and I don't know I think I think that that you know it, it offers them an opportunity to to experience what what we're experiencing in a sense and I think that you have like the perfect you know opportunity to do something like that with well, the stream and now that you bring that up it's like you you look at different types of content too you have the the Real Housewives yeah. and and the the shows that are based around the the significant others of professional athletes and content mm -hmm. creators and you know artists and all yeah. that type of stuff so. It might be the next big thing. You never know. Yeah, you know, the real that... the real wife gamers of gamers. gamers. Yeah, exactly. Crazy. Um, all right, so you're you're into into Modern Warfare two. That's when you really took off because you, and then this is when you started. Then your your wife. So mm -hmm. CPO got split up. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, keep going. So I was still playing with the same guys. We came back. We ended up. Uh, I think I was too busy. I don't know why I ended up ended up playing in the first PCL, but we actually I put put in all my effort into the second Pro Circuit ladder on Modern Warfare two. For PlayStation, and we ended up getting top 12. I think we got, but that I got a couple of reps in and a couple really good series in because I was West Coast at the time. There wasn't a lot of West Coast players, so I would host and just completely Shit mop everybody because everybody, yeah. it just wasn't fair whatsoever. Yeah, but it was my sort of chance to like stand out on the scoreboard against people like the Rambo's and the big timers of the yeah. time that were you know at the top. Yeah, so. That's when I started to get more credibility on things like the GB forums and things like that, because that's what people do oh, their yeah. top player lists yeah, and all yeah. that, and all that type of stuff. So you have to work your way up the community. Yeah. And I started getting into the the higher player eights that, yeah. of the time. So that's where I got a lot better in a short period of time. So in the matter of like four to six months, I went from being kind of average in my opinion to being one of the best players. Yeah. So that's when I started, you know, really getting a lot of pro points, which yeah. is very important too. Yep. And that's when I started talking to Aches. That's where we, we met and we talk on AIM. Yeah. AOL Instant Messenger, that was the- Like voice or text? Uh, just, just text. Okay, yeah, yeah. And uh, that's when he was, he was thinking about making a roster change possibly. So we he was already talking. on the team. Uh, so he was on a different team. Uh, I, f I think it was just Leverage was his team at the time. Yeah. So that's where the Leverage name come from. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's Pat's. Yeah. So we started talking. He wanted to drop one of his players, and we started talking. I'm like, all right, let's make it happen. So anyways, we long story short, we, we make it to Nats. We qualify with, with enough pro points. We play our first event there is me, Aches, Miles, and Juggernometry was, yeah. our, was our roster for Nats. First event we went to, I was so goddamn nervous Yeah, because this was like my mom had to come <laughs> with me because she didn't think it was like legit or anything. Yeah, yeah. But it was, it was actually a lot of fun watching the Halo event. StarCraft was there. And the first COD event that I had actually gone and competed at, we ended up getting second place. So that we won like a thousand bucks, fifteen hundred bucks each, something like that, which was at the time good cash. A lot cash. of money, yeah. You're yeah, in I high was school. Like, I was like, "Mom, me? look, here we go. We got to check. <clears throat> yeah, got to check in the mail." And that's when everything sort of became realistic that I could do this. And that's when the the duo of me and Ake started. Yeah, that's crazy, man. Uh, it, it's crazy because. You know, had you not been in that lobby that one time, right, with the one kid that said, "Hey, do you play game battles?" How long would it have taken for me to learn about it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I love these little like moments in time that that really alter or reshape what your reality was up until that point. Yeah, exactly. Um, when did you start getting? Okay, so so the timeline goes: Modern Warfare is when you started. Yeah. Modern Warfare 2 is when you learned about game battle. No, no. Modern War anyway, so you teamed up with Aix in Modern Warfare 2? Correct. So if I remember correctly, Modern Warfare 2 was when we f first had our, our team mm -hmm. uh, with with them. And then the following game was what, Black Ops 1? Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah. That's when we met. 
I met you or we I knew I, I first heard about you in person when you were being casted by Fwiz at the at the um, at the what's that blues what's a shit? House of Blues House of Blues mm -hmm. GameStop GameStop House of Blues tournament in LA on it's one of the fucking streets. Yeah. And uh, and there was two teams. How many teams were there? I think there? it was four teams, if I remember. Yeah, four teams. And you know what's crazy about that is that I was I was a host there. And they gave me the microphone. And then I'm like, I grabbed the mic and I did I'm like, all right, I've seen millions of concerts. I don't know. The first thing that you do is like, what's up, LA? How's everybody doing? <laughs> yeah, I remember. You know, I and, remember. and I grab the mic and I get to the stage and there's like, yeah, let's say, let's call it 50 people yeah. in, in, in the crowd. And I and, and I walk up to the front. I'm like, what's up, LA? How's everyone doing? <laughs> and everybody's like, we're here, to, we're, here, we're here to watch video games. And I was <laughs> just like, Jesus. I was like, all right, cool. So we're going to get started. You know, I, I want nothing to do with any of you out there in the crowd. Right. In my head, obviously, I'm like, all right, cool, let's get started. You know, and I played it cool. But inside, when you are, you know, when you get up there and then you, 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 you let go of the nerves by saying the first words, I mean, you know, I'm sure a lot of people haven't had a chance. It's like public speaking. Yeah. You know, once you get going, you're good. But it's that first, you know, getting up there and everyone's looking at you. The and jitters. You're, you're buzzing and it's just like your ears are ringing. And it's like, anyway, so the second I said, what's up, L.A.? How's it? I'm like, all right, cool. I'm, I'm good. I'm done. Got a, got away. Gave the mic to Fwiz. <laughs> Fwiz started casting in. I was like, oh, my God, this guy's incredible. Yeah. Because that was the second time Fwiz and I hung out. Okay. So it's crazy. Um, all right. So that happens. What is the, did you guys compete at the, at the uh, XP, Call of Duty XP? Uh, yeah, I was at XP. Okay. Mm -hmm. What place did you come in? Uh, not good. Last. Did you really last? Mm -hmm. What was your team at the time? Uh, so, another funny story. So, the team that I wanted to make, all my players were too young to compete, so I had to form my own team. Mm -hmm. So, going into that tournament, it was probably my team and, and you guys that were going in as some of the favorites going into yeah. to, to XP. So, it was me, Proofy, yep. Stainville, oh, yeah. and Assassin. Oh. I picked all the goats of the time, yes. and I'm like, "There's no chance I lose. None. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna win this. Whatever, four hundred thousand yeah. dollars, no problem. Yeah. We go in, we play against uh, oh, our proofy. first. Our first round was, <laughs> it was uh, Obey. It was Clayster, Breezy, like Triz. Uh, I don't remember what the roster was off the mm -hmm. top of my head, but uh, we, we were playing TDM. It was a mess with of a the baby monitor. Set with the, yeah, 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 with the baby monitor. Yeah, people. Uh, so we end up getting three would and I was just, I don't think I've ever been more depressed. Yeah. Because that was the or proofy, biggest. Or Proofy, you never saw him again. Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. He, Seriously. He, he took his, he, he took his, uh, his, I guess, some chocolate bars and went upstairs and <laughs> stayed in his room for the rest of the tournament, right? We were, we were sulking. I was rooming with him. And we were just, just so depressed, man. Yeah. At, at that time, that was the tournament. That we've never really seen anything close to it in mm -hmm. Call of Duty. And, you know, really in any other eSport, I guess. It wasn't the most competitive tournament, but still it brought a lot of eyes to Call of Duty as, oh, yeah. as, a, as a competitive game. So getting knocked out first round in that one, especially that was when I was having a lot of success in Black Ops 1. Uh, we picked up Scumpy. Yep. At that time, we won the first event. Yep. We were feeling really good. How did you guys find Scumpy? Uh, so we were playing in the, the pre-Dallas ladder to like do the seating for the first open tournament, which is Dallas for Black Ops 1. And it was me, Aches, Fears, and Bobby. Yep. And basically, we were having Bobby you know, Hamwee. Yes, exactly. What happened to that dude? I have no idea what happened. To I know that he's dude. a he's a bass fisherman because we interact okay. on Twitter every so often. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, I haven't talked to Bobby in I'm, a my, long, my brain's long time. all over the place right now. Yeah, it's you because hear it's these memories. Names. Yeah, 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 exactly. You remember them. Uh, so basically, we there's an up and coming couple of players that we had our eye on because we were we were doing really well. We were quote unquote the best team at the time, uh, and we. You know, had a chance to to pick up this new up and comer, which is Scumpy. And but how did you find him? Just so we so, we play against him in the ladder. Yeah. So we we obviously we get a lot of matches in. We'd have like 50, 60, 70, 80 matches in on this ladder. Yeah. So you play against these guys on a regular occasion. We were the number one seed at the time, and we decided to make a change. So we end up dropping uh, Bobby and Scump were friends. So we ended up making the change to drop Fears for Scump. Yeah. So we go into the first tournament. It was me, Aches, Scump, and Bob. And that's when we, we won it. And yeah. We just sort of cruised through the yeah, tournament, leverage, to be honest. Right? Yep, that is quantic leverage. That's and crazy. How, but, you know, obviously, for people that, that are watching this, and, and, uh, and, and I hope that you take close, you know, pay close attention to what he's saying, because he was in high school. He was playing part-time. 
you know, people often ask us, like, how do I get discovered? How do I get, you know, how, how, how do I break through? Mm-hmm. And it's a good question because right now there isn't a set sort of uh, pathway yeah. for, for up and comers to, to become something. And, uh, and, you know, all over the place, you're seeing leagues pop out. You have this high school league that's doing something. You have this other high school league that's doing something. You have this college leagues that are having. But, and, and I always say, I'm like, those are a little bit of a flawed concept. Like, I understand the need for something like that, but it, it, it cannot be that. Right. It, can, it can't be the way that they, they're shaping it out to be where there's going to be this collegiate, you know, intramural sort of thing where after school, you know, the, the, the traditional... Uh, you know, basketball, football, you know, we're going to go across town to play this high school, that high school. It can't be that because, one, it's online. Yep. Two, if you're young if you're young and you're good, you can still become pro, like, right there and then. Unlike physical sports, you don't need to – all you need is your hand-eye coordination yeah. and good thumbs. Um, or, you know, you, you know what I'm saying? So what what is, uh, what is, like, your number one, like, today, to this day, as a coach, let's say – What's the, be- what's the best advice that you can give somebody that wants to become that? Because you've done it all. You went yeah. from from a an average player to a semi-pro to a pro to a world fucking champion to coach and now the personality that you are today. Uh, it's tough to give advice because we do have the AM circuit now in the CWO, which I think is a really good opportunity. Uh, but it's all about getting to that point where you actually have a dedicated team and you have some sort of way to get better. So I guess the biggest things is... Whatever, whenever you have an opportunity to, to match up against some of these top players, whether it be, you know, we had the 2Ks of, of times past where you had a chance to compete against top players, find a dedicated squad, start on your game battles ladders, and get reps in on the actual game types that the pros play on. Yeah. And then work your way up those ladders, start, you know, those, those pay-to-enter tournaments. That's how you play against better competition. It's all about putting yourself in, some of, in, in a situation where you're practicing against people that are better than you. Because if you keep playing the this people on the same playing field as you, you're never going to improve. How are you going to improve? You need to get smacked in the face a little bit, yep. so you can stand back up and realize how they're beating you and why they're better than you. And if it's just talent, if it's just knowledge, if it's experience, figure out what your next steps need to be as to how to improve your gameplay and your entire team's gameplay. Because it's five v five now. It's not just you. You could be the best player in the world. If no one likes you, you're not going to get on a team and you're going to get dropped. Yeah, it's as simple as that. Yeah, they they always have to say, hey, how do you scout players? Hey, even as close as, as recent as yesterday, somebody's like, how do how do players scout or how do you scout players? And I'm like, the players scout the players because yeah. anybody can be good. It's all about chemistry because unlike traditional sports, you know, where you are always together and, and, and there's a disagreement, you have a physical sort of presence where you can either agree to disagree or you can push and push and push to see what happens um, in an altercation sort of scenario, where in video games, so you're across the country and you can hang up on the argument or you can keep on going and, and not have sort of that physical um, presence, then you, the, the, you're sort of you're sort of handicapping your relationship and you're sort of handicapping the, the chemistry within a team by not having a presence there. So right. um, chemistry is, is all about whether or not you're, 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 you're a good enough human to be able to, to, to understand somebody else's point of view and choose to say, agree to disagree, or like I said, you know what, you're a moron, I can't deal with this ever again, I'm out. Right. You know? Mm-hmm. I agree. And then the whole <clears throat> scouting player thing, well, like, I think of the players that we picked up Yep. What me and Aix, uh, obviously, you have to give Aix a lot of credit. He had an eye for these certain people yeah. that had something extra. We picked up Scump. Look at Scump. Yeah. We picked up Krim. Look, look at Krim. Krim. Obviously, Krim had more of a history at the time because yeah. he came from Halo. He played COD back in the day. But still, like, look at where these people are now. You know when these players are up and coming because they make waves with their gameplay. Yeah. These pro players match up against these guys a couple times, and there's respect earned on the game yeah. when you play against them. Yep. Another good example is for like TJ and Dashy, players on our team right now. Yeah. You knew they were going to be godlike. And how, how can you explain it? You just, you see them play, you see them match up against some of the best people in the world, and they're doing great. It's as simple as that. They, they, if you are good enough and you have the, enough social skills to work your way up the community yeah. and up the ladder, like Dashy and TJ, for example, they were stuck playing S&D tournaments for a while, yeah. but they would sure as hell won a lot of them. 
Yeah. And people notice that. Quick interruption. I want to give a huge shout out to MacWeldon.com forward slash eavesdrop. If you want to get 20% off uh, your purchase, you use the code eavesdrop. I did. I used my own code to get a discount because it was right there. And then why couldn't, why shouldn't I? Now, Mac Weldon is a company that has a very key focus on smart design, premium fabrics, and you can get anything from socks that you wear every single day underwear, boxer briefs in my in, in, in my experience. Uh, I pretty much ended up ordering a whole bunch of socks, a whole bunch of underwear, because, you know, washing, I, I'd rather use 30 days of underwear and then throw them in a pile and then wash them all at once and then have everything clean when I, when I do that. It just makes it a lot easier for me. But anyway, as I said, I order socks, uh, underwear, uh, some sweatpants for sleeping. I like to sleep in sweatpants. I don't know if I wear socks too, okay? I know that you guys, some of you don't wear socks when you sleep, I do. Anyway, it is uh, really cool. Uh, the shopping experience makes it super easy for you to, to make everything easier to shop. Uh, everything is fit to size. I wear an XL if you were wondering. I don't know why you would. Make sure that you get the silver line, which is a pretty much a line of underwear that's antimicrobial for all you guys that have problems down there when you're sitting for eight hours a day playing blackout, you're gonna need something like that. Uh, but yeah, like I said, it was a super easy shopping experience. Thank you so much for sponsoring the podcast. MacWeldon.com forward slash eavesdrop, code eavesdrop, as you'll see in the description down below, to get 20% off. You're welcome, okay? I just hooked you up. <laughs> you're welcome. Anyway. It's as simple as that. Yeah, and uh, you know, Dashy when he was here with Complexity, like he immediately stood out as a as an outgoing dude. Yeah. You know, not not goofy per se, but you know, that the fun to be around sort of dude. Definitely. Yeah, and everybody was calling him Brucey, Brucey, Brucey. And I'm like, I'm like, all right, it's pretty cool. And then when uh when I started doing more research, not that I had anything to do with the scouting of him at all, never. Um, when I started doing research on him to see like who he was and background checks, that's yeah, common sense. You do background checks on, <laughs> right. on the players there, you know, that 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 could be part of your team. Um, you know, you started you started to see that he had like the highest KD like all last all last season, was mm -hmm. it? And I'm like how does somebody like that that has the highest KD all across all of them against you know the tougher competition that ends up being better at them in placing better is is still stuck in a in a situation where where you know where he not, not, doesn't necessarily have the the right infrastructure team wise around him um, and it isn't until gaps need to be filled that that those sort of opportunities happen and you know if you look at him the amount of the amount of offers that he may have had while we were trying to pick him up yeah had to have been a lot well especially you know, at the time too yeah, we switched you, over to 5v5 100 so thieves. that just automatically opened yeah. a lot of spots open plus 100 thieves gets in in, in the market mm -hmm. with nade so yeah think about that a lot of spots get open and i don't know what what was it what do you think what did you say to him to to come on to play with us i never spoke to him individually obviously a lot of the roster stuff because at the time it was crim yeah. Seth, me yeah and we sort of just gave our opinions on on certain players, yeah. what we thought about what the roles were going to be for we the new game. We wrote it on the, on the whiteboard, remember? Right, exactly. So we just kind of figured out what all of our options were and sort of, you know, you talk about the skill, you talk about the roles of at the actual in-game stuff. And then we also thought about who would fit in with our the style of, of team that we wanted to. Yeah. So picking up young players in the fashion that we did, and obviously we got Karma back to go. Uh, I feel like we have a we just made a great combination of these younger crazy talents that are also uh, just very open to listen to these the yeah. most well accomplished players. Yeah, when when uh, when the whole karma thing went down, where uh, which side were you on? Because obviously me and me and Hitch were on the no no let's keep karma let's keep karma. But you know obviously we have emotional attachments to 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 certain players and we don't see things the way that you guys see it. Right. And at the time it was bad. You know like. Oh, it's terrible. It, yeah, inner. It, I remember you saying that you've never been with with you've never been a part of such a talented team that just didn't get along. Or uh, it was a combination of them. Just I feel like the most complacent group of people, and it was such a that was this is exactly when I came on coaching, and mm -hmm. it was exactly what I was worried about, and exactly what I thought happened happened. Yeah, they they finally accomplished the goal of winning champs with the dynasty roster. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, that was the last thing that that group wanted to do together, and they mentally flipped a switch. I don't know how if it was all of them, if yeah. it was a few of them, or yeah. what it was, because I'll never know. I don't know what they were thinking individually, yeah. but that team did it. They they were happy. They were okay with what had gone on, and whatever problems came up from that point forward, just they didn't. It didn't seem to matter that much to them. So we go into World War II. They start off hot. They're looking really good. I come on as coach. We lose Dallas, and, they're, and then things just start to unravel. The practice starts going extremely poor. 
Uh, Seth doesn't figure out a situation to get good reps in online because his internet was a mess at the time. So, and just no one really seemed to care or want to step up to, to fix that stuff. I think that roster could have been completely fine. It's some of the best players of all time. Yeah. It's the dynasty roster. Yeah. They surpassed my roster as the best roster of all time. And I just don't think they cared enough to, to I guess, grow up and sort out their issues and figure out why they were frustrated with each other. And it just became more and, to- more, and more toxic over time. And I don't want to take anything away from them or put the blame on them at all because they're the ones that had all that that success. They created this greatness themselves. But it was a very tough situation for me. My first time coaching, Yeah, I come into an absolute mess. Yeah, And I'm just trying to do my job. The team. Yeah. Yeah. And I was trying. I'm like, guys, we need to do this. We need to do X and Y and practice and focus. And it's just like, they didn't care. Yeah. They didn't care. They weren't listening as much. It was very frustrating for me. I was just getting demolished on socials yeah, oh, as well because yeah. no, the worst they're like well you came on and ruined the roster yeah. and all that crap i'm like, like well this you, is just <laughs> fucking like, great couldn't have been fun to be just you. great man we used to it was talk a rough year yeah we used to talk about it i was like man poor teeth man yeah just, it, it's a shit show that he walks into like obviously like a great opportunity right yeah, obviously right but then you walk in and it's just like because you know as, as a coach you got to see like the dynasty team is like oh yeah i can i can add a little bit more so we can be even more successful yeah, exactly right so, so we can win decisively and not take all these you know like improvements it's like that picture that the meme of the dog sitting in the room on fire and everything everything's fine, fine. <laughs> yeah. it's like uh, everything's great <laughs> yeah and, and then i would see reddit and then i would see obviously on on uh, on twitter and it's like hacks you've got to drop teep and yeah you got to change coaches and this that, and i'm like it's a little bit more than that, and it's tough because you can't. Can't talk about it's it. Like, yeah, it, it because because of the it, it's it's all about the mental stability of the player, a competitive player, and this and this blankets all competition across. Uh, whether you're you're a, you're a shuffle professional shuffleboarder or you're a professional gamer, or you're a professional basketball player, you can't mess with the zen of what it is. To, to be a, a mental case, which most competitive people are, they have to be. Yeah. There has to be a level of of uh, of sociopath in them to be able to say, I'm the best, I'm the best, I'm the best. Oh, I'm definitely. Best. I got to beat you, got to beat you, got to well, beat you. Especially when I was a pro too, I could speak on that. Like yeah. I was not a mentally healthy person. I'll admit that straight up. Yeah. To be the best, you you need to have that sense of I'm better than all of you yeah. and there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. And if you don't have it, I feel like you can't win multiple times in a row. It no. sounds crazy thinking about it now because yeah. I've, I've competed in multiple years now. Yeah. But it took me a little while to get out of that zone as a Man, the, the, when I stopped playing, I say it was a period of four to six months where I was trying to normalize the way I thought about things again because yeah. I had a crazy amount of success. The last year, year and a half of my pro career was a roller coaster. Yeah. So it was just like everything was a, a, a definite, definite shock when I wasn't at that top yeah. spot anymore. Well, let me ask you this, and this is going to fucking get you mad maybe. <laughs> or, or get you back unstable, unhinged. <laughs> Because uh, I asked, you, I asked you last year, so that I'm like, I'm like, you could still do this at a pro level, right? You're like, I can shit on half the, uh, I can shit on ninety percent of the people that are playing right now. Yeah. Do you think to this day you can still? Uh, I, if you, ninety percent's a little high. I, yeah. I think if I was dedicated, yeah. and I was in the same state of mind as I am right now, I think I could still be a pro. Yeah. Straight up, I yeah. think I have the talent. So I. I like, think of like. I, I hate talking like this. No, please. But this I, is where you do it. For the amount of time that I competed and all these others c- competed, I did extremely well. Yeah. So f- when people talk poorly about how I didn't compete in a as competitive generation yeah. and all that type of stuff, it's look, like, these morons. A lot talk of about- these people were playing at the same time I yeah. was. It's not my fault. Yeah. It's not. How is that my yeah. fault? No, it isn't. You know. No. So look, all. all- all these morons say the same thing about <laughs> fucking Michael Jordan. That if Michael Jordan played, oh, you're in triggering this, so in, many in, people in, right in now. The, I, I, don't, I don't give a shit. These are facts. Okay, Michael Jordan's the best that ever lived. <laughs> period. Okay, and and the and the fact that people say, well, they, he didn't play in this era. I'm like, he used to get like punched going up. You know, it doesn't matter. It's, it's, yeah. It, but yeah, no, I, I agree with you 100. percent I, th- I think you still can. And that's why I ask you. I asked you last year. That's why I'm asking you right now. Is because I do think that that you can. You know, that that sort of that sort of uh, that sort of skill is, is a flip of a switch, right? Uh, and and then a p- perfect example. Look at Manny Pacquiao. Just recently, they thought that that Broner was gonna go in there and beat the shit out of him because he's yeah. younger, faster, and and that. But when you're ta- when you're when you have a talent and, and, and it's a it's a God given talent that it's it's more than just practice. This yeah. is a gift. 
you know, you 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 you're you're above somebody else in that right. in that situation. Well, and people love stats. Like you look at my career stats, I have my, my, I have like a point nine eight. Yeah. But I sure have a, a lot of championships. Yeah. I, I switched roles to the objective when we we picked up Scump and Proof back yeah. in Black Ops One. I am. I was a perfectionist when I was a player. I'm still a perfectionist when it comes to being a coach. Yeah. And you see all this talent, and they do not play the game as well as they could. Yeah. So that's exactly why I wanted to be a coach. Yeah. And I think it was the perfect transition for me. Yeah. There are so many little things that people might not pick up on, even pros to this day, yeah. that you can just put yourself a little bit ahead of others yeah. and be just a little bit faster, a little bit more efficient, and that's yeah. how you win multiple championships in a title. Yeah. Because it's very competitive. Yeah. And there, I think the average talent in COD right now is higher, way higher than when I was playing. Yeah. But they aren't winning. Yeah. A lot of players are new and yeah. they're good. Yeah. But they aren't winning. Yeah. And then you, you, you know, we go back to you know, twenty minutes from this podcast, as twenty minutes ago. If you played against the current state of you know current talent out there, your 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 talent would elevate with them as well. I'd have it's, to. It, yeah. It, it's not it's not a thing where it's like, well, I you know, I, I can't compete here. It's not that. The more you play against people that are better than you, the more that you can elevate your own state. So who knows? Maybe you would have been pushed to become. It's just a, a, a different player. game too. Yeah. Like people play on way higher sensitivities now. Like I'd have to crack up my sensitivity. It's, yeah. it's sink or swim. You have yeah. to become a, as competitive as the people around you. And if you don't, then you'll just drop off. Adapt or die. And people thought I was doing so poorly in like AW. It was like, oh, Teep, you were so garbage at that game. It's like, yeah. my average placing still wasn't that bad. Yeah. If people had the average placing that I had then, now, yeah. people would be okay with it. Yeah. So it's just all scale, yeah. and you know, it's, it's a, only okay when you're doing yeah, it. Right, you know exactly. what I'm saying? Like, it's but a, I, I understand it too because what people expected of me was yeah. so high, yeah. and I expected so highly of myself. So yeah. at that time, getting top eight in AW, that was me playing like shit. Yeah. So I completely understand it too. Yeah. But people need to keep the scope yeah. in the right on the right scale. I laughed at uh, when was it? I don't know. A couple a couple of weeks ago, Nate was telling me how he was trying to. And I don't know if I'm talking out of, out of school here, but it's you know it's it's in good good heartedness. But uh, Nate's players were like, I don't know, they, they, they try to take a jab at Nate, and then he's like, well, time out, time out, time out. <laughs> I have more championships than all you motherfuckers, right? So you know, ease up. Yeah. Like, yeah, sure, it, it, yeah, I may not be able to compete right now, but you gotta you gotta yeah. respect the fact that well, I did and- something, <laughs> and it's fucking Nate shot, okay? Exactly. Even if you win ten thousand tournaments from here on out, you'll Nate never shot. be you you may never be able to achieve the level of success that this dude has achieved, right. transcending. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I don't know. It, again, it was all in, in in good fun and all that yeah. shit, but. You it's know, fun. It's fun to take jabs at one another. Absolutely, when it, when it comes to that stuff. Yeah, but, it is. It is when you mean it, though, that you're yeah. just like you, you. need to check yourself. Well, too, and to like, see. I can completely agree with Nate Shot on some of that stuff. It's like we're pretty calm. We don't. We don't yeah. have an ego about that type of stuff. We did well in our time, and we yeah. sort of like moved on. But if people want to challenge us on it, yeah. it's like, what do you got? Like one or two championships? Who's yeah. talking? How many do you have total? Uh, so it's kind of skewed at the time. I don't. I don't even know how many land wins I have because majors were. Yeah. We counted like online between, ones as yeah. majors, including, say, including it, UMGs and all yeah, that. Yeah. People say like eighteen for the majors for yeah. me. Eighteen uh, uh, for lands, it's probably like thirteen. I don't know, something around that range. So still ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the players currently playing will never be able to achieve that. Probably. Yeah. Period. So just take take that into consideration when you try to yeah. challenge somebody. You know, I just hate talking like that though because it makes me just come off as like not at all. And dude. Stuff you're in like good that. company, dude. Yeah, all right, I'll fair, tell you fair that. Fair enough. Much. I respect that. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. like people people hear that and they're like, oh, this guy is washed up now and all that type of stuff. I'm like, well, calm, calm it down a yeah, little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like I I chose to not. You know, I, I try to give you a plat. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, I'm, I'm letting you win some. Maybe right. I have a better chance. And then you're still not doing it. Um, you know, I, I I often I often get into these these mental arguments with myself about whether or not it's ego or it's egotistical or if it's you just spitting fucking facts. Right. You know, if you were lying and said, you know, I won twenty championships yeah. or something something skewed, I get it. But if you're saying and, and you're downgrading it and saying and say some of these won't consider that, and you're saying 18, 18 is eighteen. Period. Yeah. I'm not bragging. I'm telling you what I did. Right. So it's not as it's not as hard, right? Right now, right now you can say, right now you could say it's like, yeah, I'm the most sub to blackout you know player in the world, and right. that's not bragging. These are just facts. Mm-hmm. It just depends on who you're talking to and how you say it, I guess. Yeah. See, I, I never I never sugar because especially when I'm you know 
not that it means anything or anything, but you know, when I'm around dudes, I'm a dude. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I come from the '90s, so anything that I say, period, is period. You know, I'm not. I don't care about guys' feelings. Right. I never have. I respect and that. And I don't understand how people soften their tone for. I've never, and I never would soften my tone for any dude ever. Oh, I do it and, sometimes. Yeah. I had to in my pro career too. I, I think one of my, my biggest accomplishments is is staying sane throughout our our <laughs> dynasty run. Yeah. I want. I will give someone a lot of money if they could put up with aches, clay, and crim during that time. Yeah. My God, man. Yeah. <laughs> it couldn't have been easy. I was I built so much patience during that time and I'm so glad I had so much patience. But yeah. the way that we would go about getting better and talking to each other, it just wasn't professional whatsoever. Yeah. It was just raw yeah. emotion coming out. Yeah. And we figured out a way to to bash our heads together and, and make it work and be great. Yeah. So uh, man, it, it was it was stressful though, man. Yeah. Oh, the amount of times where I heard Crim saying he's gonna beat the hell out of Pat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Find a that, dollar that, for every time. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. And and that's that's where the competition level and that's where, where it's as sports as it gets. How many conversations like that that you guys were having have been had in a locker room, yeah. have been had on exactly. the field, any field. In a, in a competitive setting. So I, I, I completely believe it. I mean, look, I experienced it. I, I've done a really, really good job in my career. And maybe it's because I'm older, so I take a, I shouldn't take as much credit because I, you know, I had life, life underneath me. But man, dealing with the egos that, you know, obviously rising superstars, the Nate shots, the fucking scumps, yeah. them, them butting heads. And then, you know, obviously getting the Krim six who like, Krim, Krim to me has always been like top three favorite players of all time, mm -hmm. right? I, I even said it when he was on, on Complexity, I believe at the time, like I, I got interviewed by Puck and he's like, you know, who do you like outside of your team? Who's that? And I say, Crim Six, man. He just came from Halo. Like it's a good story. Like and I love watching him play. Um, so he's always been a player, but you know, dealing with him and, and, and working with him and, and doing that, like you get to see like the level of competition that just, he can't help to be any other way besides he, a fucking competitor. He expects perfection. Yeah. Like I said, uh, I spoke words on certain players when I stopped competing, yeah. and he has the the most competitive mind that I've ever seen. Yeah, and he expects greatness from the people around him. Yeah, and that's why he is where he is, in my opinion. Yeah, you like I feel like to be so dominant in probably anything, you have to to think a certain way about it at all yeah. times, and he's definitely one of those people. Yeah. And you know what? I, I I thank him for it because we wouldn't be able to get to where we're at if he didn't. You know, as as much as it is tough to to sometimes listen, and it's tough to listen to him like do his crim thing, like if if he took it a tiny little bit easier on his teammates, like you know, it, it, it is these sort of pushes that pushes people to to greatness. Definitely. And not, look, I'm not gonna say that that his teammates aren't talented; they are yeah. obviously. But you know, it is it is that un, unreasonable way of thinking that that pushes people to the other day. I mean, let, let's go back to, to World War II when we were boot camping here. You know, I hear yelling, you're over there, they're playing there. I hear yelling and I come out to see what's happening. All of a sudden I see a fucking mix amp flying at my feet. <laughs> and then Crimsix, yeah, Crimsix had literally just Hucked thrown it. it, right? And then bounce, bounce, bounce into my feet. And I, and, I, and I just went like this, I'm like, I can't, I can't, I, I, I'm, I can't even say anything. Not that I couldn't, but I just will never be able to be in that sort of mental, competitive mental state that he's in. So instead of me adding on to the frustration, I just say, eh, it's fucking Krim doing Krim it's fucking crim. things. It's Krim. Yeah. He, he gets in these modes where he gets in that sort of bitchy mode. Yeah. And I, you, you do your best to, yeah. to calm him down to a certain extent, but yeah. you, you got to let him get get that frustration yeah. and, and explain himself in the way that he wants to. Yeah. Because without and, it, people aren't going to listen. And I'll give you the for, perfect example. In that situation, it would have been really easy to be like, yo, what the fuck are you doing? Call me yeah. the fuck. Right? I didn't. I just let this comp competition practice and all that shit. I did when he fucking threw my drone on the ground because he grabbed it the wrong way. We we're playing big ball soccer in a, at, the, at, the, at the scuff house and I'm taking the aerial shots and then the drone's coming down and I'm like, Krim, get out of the way. And then he's like, He's just looking at it. He's like he's, I, I can see him just like wanting to be one with the drone. I'm like, Krim, get out the way. It's landed. It lands automatically. It's 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 uh it it, it knows how to land by itself. He's like, no, nah, I better fucking grab it, right? And I can see it. He didn't say anything. So he goes and grabs one side of it, one side of the. Uh, it had two legs. He grabs one side. So the the drone tilts to the side and fucking cuts oh. him. 
And he's like, ah. Oh. And I'm like, don't throw my fucking drone. He throws it on my like, what the fuck? I, I get so mad at him. I'm like, don't grab my fucking drone like that again. It is not your drone. I don't give a fuck. You grabbed it the wrong way. It was your fault. So I laid into him yeah. in that scenario. He, we're, we're having fun. Yeah. You, know, you fucked up. You, and, and it's my drone, motherfucker. Right. Right? The, the, the mix app, eh, you're in competition. I understand. A little different. People break bats all the time when they're angry. You know, they, it's it, crim it, rage, it dude. You yeah. just got to figure out how to deal with it. Who is uh, the, the best teammate you've ever had? Uh, and don't be afraid to so offend anybody I, that has been your teammate. No, I get that question a lot. And it's just like, for, for me, it really depended on the day. Uh, some days it, it was aches. Me and him thought very alike about the game at times. And I thought, like, we were very methodical in how we played Call of Duty. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, when we talk about, you talk about the two different dynasty lineups, we were so calculated on complexity yeah. where I feel like the optic gaming one was brute force, pure yeah. talent, yeah. bully you for a victory. Yeah. So really different when you think about how the, the lineups were made. So tactically, I feel like Pat, yeah. passion, perfection for Krim, and just positive energy, you got to go with Clay. Yeah. So like, I, you got, I have to, I, I yeah. list all three of them. Yeah. And obviously, Damon's in there too. Damon just is a complete thinks completely differently about a lot of things, especially yeah. when it comes to Call of Duty. And now being in a coaching position, I have to like reinforce because he's not the most strong. He doesn't, you know, get his points out there very strongly often. Yeah. So when I hear him bring up certain things, oh, like multiple times, I'm like, guys, listen to Barlow. Yeah. The guy has picked up on something. Let's yeah. let's pay attention to yeah, it because yeah. it's karma. He yeah. he just figures shit out yeah, that people like, other people don't. Like they keep going, B man. <laughs> yeah, that, exactly. that doesn't get the point. And I'm across. like, yo guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, especially with loud mouths like you know. Yeah. Um, who's the worst teammate? Ooh. And you can go all the way back and, and throw somebody under the bus. Who, who did you say? Uh, I've always called Joe? Pat my my best and worst teammate. Yeah. Pat when he was bad, it was definitely Pat. Yeah. You know, and and to me, if somebody was to ask me any day of the week. Any in the last ten years, who who I think are like the top three brightest Call of Duty players of all time? Pat's always in the in the, in the oh, discussion. Has to be. Yeah, uh, I you know obviously he's the he's the, he's he's our kryptonite. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like he's the he's the alter ego. He's the nemesis in our story because in, in in his story we're the nemesis. We're the we're the dark force yeah. and he's Luke. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so so I always say that because facts are facts. You know, and, and Patty Aches has you know. Proven time and time again, yeah. he can win with fucking anybody. Uh, I, I, that's the duo. I have so much damn respect for him for yeah, for same. eyeing this certain talent, convincing me to, to to make the changes that we did at certain times so that I did not agree with some of the time, and we just worked really well together. But and then it got to the point where it was the end of our EG time, and I I, I just couldn't do it anymore. To, yeah. to be honest, uh, basically, what ha- there's a, just a lot of drama going on at the end of Ghosts. Uh, Krim wanted to leave. Like yeah. The team was sort of going their separate directions. Yeah. And in hindsight, I should have stayed with Aches. Uh, joining Optic Nation in AW was the worst career move I made because the roster was terrible. Yeah. In hindsight. Yeah. Um, but that really, that was the downturn where I was still at, you know, people thought I was the best still. Yeah. And after the Optic Nation, I went to, I went to Envy. Yeah. And then my reputation as a player, yeah, yeah, like, your, 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 yeah, your current sort of, your I want to say fizzled out because I definitely could have made some more waves in Black Ops Three, got on a better roster, all that type yeah. of stuff. But it, I, and I should have stayed with Pat. But at the time, I just it was just one time too many of too much toxicity, too much of him taking things into his own hands and yeah. not respecting the the thoughts and opinions of the rest of his team. Yeah, and I just couldn't do it anymore mentally. Yeah. I was just done. So. Going away from him was, was a good and bad thing for me. Yeah. Do you regret where you're at right now, though? No. 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 Because yeah, I was super happy when you came on Optic Nation. I knew that that team necessarily wasn't like, you know, where you should have been. But the way that I was thinking about it, I'm like, I need to, I need to, you know, stack the roster just in case something happens. You right. know, like look at Karma. Well, you know, everyone was sort of thinking it. It was like, who, who's going to be after an aid shot? Yeah. That like. That's no offense to anybody. That yeah, just, no, of it, it just got to a certain point. Yeah. And Damon got that. Yeah. It, it could have been a plenty of other people. Yeah. Could have been so you. It could have been me. Yeah. It could have been, you know, a Tatch or, I don't know, you throw different names in there at the yeah. time. So it just ended up working out that way. But um, I, I, I don't regret it at all. Yeah. At the time, it was pretty miserable for me just because I was used to a certain level of, of oh, greatness yeah. mm-hmm. that I just wasn't getting. And I feel like the biggest 
thing that led to me not wanting to play anymore is my passion wasn't being matched. My hours weren't being matched by my teammates. And I myself was becoming a bad teammate. Yeah. Those were the three biggest things where I was like, I need to take a second and reevaluate what I'm doing. Yeah. Because I was becoming very, very toxic. And uh, the wife might talk about that times as well. I would get off the game and just be yeah. fucking pissed yeah. that I was getting my time wasted, that my team didn't think about the things the same way as me. And I, was, I wasn't a great teammate. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. What was, what was your team? Uh, you, Bose, Me, Bose, Mir. Proof, and oh, Karma. Proof. And then we switched out Bose for Swan for a little bit there. Love Swan. Love Swan. Love Swan. I actually love teaming with that guy because yeah. he is a grinder. He has yeah. that same sort of mindset. Yeah. But that was short-lived because of you yeah. know, different issues. And yeah. then we go into champs and I was trying to leave and it was just like, you know, yeah. crap happened. Yeah. You know, uh, Swanee to me is uh, one, of the, one of the coolest dudes I've ever met in this industry. Like he's yeah. just so... He's just good. One day, one day, hopefully, I get to work with him. Yeah. Like uh, in a, he could be a good corporate uh, level sort of. Uh, Definitely, I play blackout way too much with the guy. Yeah, I absolutely love him. Yeah, I got a, I got ten kills yesterday. Ooh, I'm nasty look at with you. a sniper. I just need to play look more. That's, that's, that's the, that's hey, the did only. Did you try issue. the new uh, ambush list yet? The no. sniper one? No, no, no. Dude, yeah, that's it's your, good. That's your domain right there. Yeah, it Snipers. is. Snipers. Yeah. Oh, it's easy. It comes easy. It's natural to me. Uh, and um, and I don't know. Again, sniping has always been my thing. What is uh, what is the one thing? I mean, collabing with with um, collabing on different levels with with courage obviously helped you because you 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 collabed on streams mm -hmm. and you were good on PC, like really good on PC. Yeah, something that I, I I I'll never be able to say about myself. I just can't. It just I have too many mental blocks on that. My pinky gets stuck from a basketball injury. That's and, tough. and I can't press shift. It, it hurts after put, <laughs> pressing shift too long. And brutal. It, like key binding, all that is, is, is. But what do, what do you attribute? Like your. Uh, let me rephrase this or, or reframe this because it. it I don't want to ask you. What do you own? You know what do you attribute your success to? Because I can tell you it is. It is the fact that you are wor not not only are you good at the game, but you are outworking everybody in like, Straight like up. every single day and. Did, did you take that, because I'm having trouble with my words right now because I can see in my head that Jack, for example, right? Jack came on and outworked everybody else. Happened to be really good at every single game that he played, yep. like you. But he outworked every single person. I mean, Ninja, for as long as he was, uh, he is on top, right? Yeah. But for as long as he had those many successful days, he still was outworking everybody Straight else. Straight up. Inspirations. So, yeah. So for me, it, well, did you take a, 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 a like a like a page? Because you used to stream, but you didn't stream as often or, or as consistent as you did now, did you? Well, debate at, at certain stints, I did, uh, especially you know throughout uh, some of the earlier Call of Duties, but in Ghosts, Black Ops Two, Ghosts, AW. I was putting in these crazy hours too, just no one noticed. Yeah, and I definitely lost uh, motivation to do it as time went on because I, you know, the numbers were okay, but yeah. obviously. It gets to the point where it's a it's time spent based on money earned. And yeah, all well, that yeah. What, what are you so, putting in? Are you getting uh, back? back? Right. Yeah. So it was really when I came back in for World War II, I would stream ranked for you know I was putting crazy hours too, and we yeah. got some traction. And yeah. they, but people just didn't really like the game as much. Yeah. But yeah, definitely. You know, I've I've I watched Ninja for years back when he was you know playing Halo, playing Destiny. You know, for he he just kept putting in those hours. Jack, sort of the same thing. I saw him come up from a lowly Call of Duty caster from the from from nowhere yeah. to see where he is now. Yeah, and it just gets to the point where you have to just have to ask yourself, I'm doing the same sort of things as these guys. Why can't I do it too? Yeah. So as soon as I did switch to console for Blackout, I started you know I started getting a thousand viewers, then I started getting 15, 1,500 concurrent yeah. viewers, and then get a couple hosts from from Krim and from Seth, and you know a little help from from the Optic Juice, the Green Wall Juice, and it just sort of has formulated into. It turned into you know twenty straight streams with over three thousand viewers, and now I'm holding five, six, almost seven k concurrence. So, the it's it, I I knew I got some momentum. I knew I got that little spark. Yeah. And I was like, me and the wife had a talk. We started looking at my analytics, yeah. my unique viewers, my yeah. concurrence, all that type of stuff. And it's, it's like, yep. it's grind time. Yeah. So no one's gonna outwork me. Yep. 
if I keep getting the amount of support, I keep telling my stream, the more I grow, the more I grind. Yeah. Because it's, it's once in a lifetime. It's, it's life changing. Yeah. We're trying to save to buy a house. We're trying to expedite our future yeah. and get these plans going. And this helps. So my eyes lit up. And yeah. I'm like, this is what I've been working for, streaming for seven years. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. And, and, and it's not work, right? You're having fun. It's yeah, Call it, of Duty. Oh, you I, love Call of Duty. I love Blackout. Yeah. So it's just icing on the cake at that point. Cool. I love playing for that many hours. Top three or yeah, top three favorite Call of Duty of all time. Uh, Black Ops 2. Mm-hmm. COD 4. Yep. And currently this one. We have to wait and see how the, how this lifespan plays out. Yeah. But, but the, just the, the memories of Black Ops 2 for yeah. me. Um, well, winning so much, too. Winning so felt, much, felt too. Good. And then COD 4, it was just, that, I could just pub that game. Everyone could, right? Yeah. It was just magical at the time. And then this one's been you know, crazy so I far. I didn't pub Black uh, uh, Modern Warfare that really? much. I, like, I seriously, even since then, the only thing I play is 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 game battles. I've, ne- gotcha. I've never been a pub, pub star. You know, Fair even enough. even in my sniper days when I used to try to get gameplays, I would only do it as that. But my passion has always been in competition. Obviously, I'll never be able to play it at, 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 at that level, but I still compete. And I get my, uh, you know, I, I get my ass kicked sometimes. Sometimes we win. And it feels good. But the, the competition to me has always been, I, and I see everything through the eyes of competition. Graffiti. Graffiti for me has always been like, who's the more talented? Who's the most innovative? Who can get, right. who can paint the city more? Right? It was a competition thing. Um you know, uh, you know, rap, for example, I always think who's the, who's the most creative, who can compose the, the best lyrics, the, the metaphors and the similes, the best. That's a competition. Everything in my life has always been competition. And I and like it, to me, it never surprised me that I ended up in a place where I'm surrounded by competition, because no matter what it is in this world, I can make a competition out of it. Right. It's just the way that I was that, that, that that's that's been brought up in it's me. how you get better. Straight up. Yeah. And sometimes even even when you don't, man, like uh, a lot of people. You know, we needed we needed a year, like last year. In if, if you look at optic the way that I look at optic as as a, as a storyline, and you know, I, I I look at optic through the eyes of what this franchise looks like when it's a billion dollar franchise. Yeah. You know, and we couldn't we couldn't continue to have the success that we the success as you know success 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 for years in that. You know, most people see. The lifespan of uh, of competition is like, well, well, this year we won, we lost. We, I was seeing as like in a ten year period, you know, we had you know years like this, years like that, and we just were bound to have a year like the one that we did yesterday yeah. or, or yesteryear. Um, and you know what? This year is going to be the most successful year that we've ever had. Hopefully, not hopefully, definitely. Um, and we're gonna enjoy it a lot more because of the year, the shit year that we just went through. Definitely, right? Like I, I, definitely. I. I I don't see a single positive thing that happened in 2018. And I, obviously, I'm really hard on, on, on my experiences. And then there's, I'm black and white. It was either good or bad. Right. And last year, it was bad for me. So, you know, forget 2018. Uh, obviously, the hex quarters came in 2018. So little things, yeah. you, can, you can say it happened. But still, black and white on the scale, it was a shit year. Yeah. You know what I'm Definitely saying? Definitely a so, down year. Yeah. So, so, so that's that. Um, Anyway, look, I don't want to keep you from the grind. I know that you're about to, to go start, so I want to thank you for stopping by. It won't Thanks be the last time I'm going to call on you several times. Hopefully, we can do yeah. a three-person uh, Eve's Would route. love to, man. Yeah, it'd be good. It's fun. Share some stories. Um, I think that the next couple of guests are going to be super interesting, so thank you for, for getting the ball rolling on that. TP, you're the man, the Thanks, myth, buddy. the legend. Thank you for stopping by. Thanks for Anything having me. you want to say? Where, where, can, where, where can people go watch you? Uh, Plug watch, it. Watch me. I stream a lot of hours on twitch.tv slash TP. And sub my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash tpcod. tpcod, like it. Uh, anyway, so thank you to our sponsor, Squarespace. As I mentioned at the beginning of the podcast, it is a place where you can create a website, simple to use tools, where you can have your whole world into one page. TP, you got to do this for, you got to promise, you got to use uh, code LASTPOD to get the 10% off. A little discount too. Yeah, you get the discount. So you, you can pretty much create your, you can put everything on there. You can create your world the way that you want it to be on your own website, all your social, social media outlets linked there. Maybe even create some sort of place where they can just go one stop shop. You know, the hex, this is the last video hex posted, the last picture hex posted, this is the last tweet hex posted. This is the last t shirt drop the hex hasn't dropped yet, but will. Anyway, be sure to check it out. Go there right now. Squarespace.com forward slash last pod, as is listed down below, and use code last pod to get 10% off. Guys, thank you for tuning in. Do not leave without leaving a like. If you are got if you guys are watching, 
on YouTube, please know that we also syndicate to all audio platforms, all the way from iTunes to Google Podcasts and everything in between from the SoundClouds to the, to the Spotify's to the Stitchers. We'll see you guys on the next one. Goodbye. <laughs>